What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Just Sayin' Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale, and we have a Just Sayin' Live coming your way July 30th at 8 p.m. here at the Comedy Store in the Belly Room. It is going to be a live extravaganza with my guest, none other than Bob the Drag Queen, former guest, and he will be with us at the live show. So get your tickets now. It's going to be so much fun. And guys, it will sell out, so get them fast. All right, I'm very excited for this week's guest. We are going to have so much fun. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, my guest this week is a writer, comedian, and drag performer who goes by the name of Sadie Pines. His work has appeared in Vice, Esquire, Out, and Newsweek, and he is the host of Newsweek's pop culture podcast, The Parting Shot. He is the co-host of the podcast, You're Making It Worse, with former guest Elliot Glazer and Brent Sullivan and the Golden Girls podcast, Out on the Lanai. It's H. Allen Scott, everyone. Hello. My resume Welcome. exhausts me. That was That's like, a lot. Well, I mean... I know. I was just... I mean, that's a lot. You sh I, like, it, it's a lot. You should be proud to be a lot. Am I? Yeah. Am I proud? Because should be. it, none of it has paid enough. I know. It never is, is yeah. it? How have you oh. been? Oh, you know, I'm surviving. <laughs> I was supposed to do... I was, I was telling you beforehand, I was pissed that Elliot did the podcast before me. Yeah. But my cat died, and that's the only reason why Elliot was allowed to do the cat... Do the podcast before me, right? Yeah, but also, like, I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you. But it is one of those, like... I had to say no. It's you like, had you had to like say no. In but in the it's... moment, I it, it, can I can I be mm -hmm. can I can I be can I cuss? Can I be frank? Cuss and be frank. I knew like the level of bigotry in which I was at that veterinarian's office mm -hmm. when I was sitting in that lobby, knowing that I'm about to put my cat down, and I'm thinking of every single thing that I have to record and film and do in the next few days. That then I'm just dictating to my boyfriend. Yeah. Text, 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 Justin. <laughs> text this person. Text this. I can't film this now. I won't show up at this party. I'm not doing this. And like, and I'm a mess bawling. And they didn't have a private room for me. So I'm literally bawling. How dare they? I know. I'm literally bawling. And there was this bitch, this bitch with this fucking huge dog. Yeah. The most annoying dog that was not trained at all. Literally. Uh, I don't, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not in, I, this, it's not her, it's not the dog's problem. It's her problem. But, she should have been put down mm -hmm. because the, the the woman, not the dog. Yeah. Because like the other bitch. Horrible. And I'm sitting there bawling, and she is just letting this dog come up to me, thinking that it's comforting me. And it's no. like, no, no, get away from me. Yeah. Like I, I don't, don't want your, your fucking dog right no. now. Yeah. Oh, that was a stressful morning. So that's why I had to cancel in which Elliot did the podcast before me. But it is one of those things where it's like you hear so it's such an LA thing where it's like, oh, I can't make it. Why? My cat died. I know. And you're like, I know. Did it? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And I, I would never actually use that because that cat was my life. That yes, cat was how old everything. was the cat? Not old, only oh. like barely 10 years old. Ew. And it was very quick and unexpected. And it just happened within 24 hours. And it was just... It's like the hardest kind of death, you know yes. what I mean? Like, I would rather just, I mean, I, I've always said, like, I'm a firm believer in no suffering. Like, I'm not going to let this cat get older than it needs to. Yeah. But, like, that was fully unexpected. It's awful. We yeah. had, we just moved into our new place. And over the weekend, we had a ER vet situation. Oh, what happened? So, well. And how much um, was the bill? Oh, I don't, I don't even want to think about the bill. Oh, I don't right. want to think about it. But we woke up and... My dog, Frida, was like, you know what sounds great for a midnight snack? Sudafed. Oh, no. So she is cooking meth in our place and uh, grabbed, Evan had a cold and she grabbed one of the little like uh, foil, what are yeah. they, you know, the little, the little packets yeah. that are and impossible just, to open. And just chewed, chewed through it. And we were like, God, and she took like a, a pill and a half. So we're calling up poison control on Saturday. Oh, best God. part of waking up. That's terrifying. So we take her to, we had to either go to Koreatown or Santa Monica. To you went to Santa Monica. ER. Went to Santa Monica. Yeah. Traffic yeah. wasn't bad. Yeah. We get in there and it was fine. It was kind of like AS ASPCA vibes. Like oh. I looked in a cage and there was a dog with one eye and I had a comb. Sarah McLaughlin was I, It was playing in my yeah. head. Spend yeah. all your time <laughs> waiting. I'm like, no, they're real. I want them to do the ice cream song in one of the commercials. Like her ice cream song. Your love is like ice cream. Oh, whatever. yeah. You know that song? That's a great song. Oh, I yeah. I mean, it's not a great song. That's like a great it's song. It's not a great song. Well, if you're a lesbian in a bathtub, yes. 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 It's yes. perfect. Yes. yes. True. Yeah. True. <laughs> um, but so we're there and and this gigantic pit bull comes in. Mm. Gorgeous, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful and they're pit often bull. sweeter than they seem. Very sweet. It has like the gold chain, which Aww. is really cute. Yeah. 
And this guy and this girl walk in, and the guy is wearing— I like, already hate them. I know. Yeah. Hang tight. Yeah. The guy is wearing, like, a security shirt, so it looks like he was a bouncer at a club. Ooh. And he's, like, tired. Like, just got off yeah. the shift, you yeah. know. The woman that he's with is just trash. Mm. Mm, yes. Trash. Trash of a human. And he's just tired. He doesn't want to be there. We don't want them there. Like, yeah. I want him to go to bed. We don't know what's wrong with the dog. Wait, why was she trash? Did she just look trashy? Just, or did I she mean, it was smell? a little... It was a little... Did she freak about Oh, wow. Yeah, it was just like... So your dog's doing meth. I mean, it seems like a perfect place I for mean, you. I mean, Breaking Bad ER. Yeah. Seriously. And... We're sitting down. Evan and I are sitting there. We have Frida. She's just, I mean, she's very chill. We're just trying to make sure Is she's she just okay. sleepy? She wasn't sleepy. She was just very, like, lethargic. Uh -huh. Just kind of like, mm. Yeah. And the woman then decides, you know what sounds like a great idea in an ER? To get on FaceTime <gasps> and just talk to oh. whoever is on the other line no. at full volume. Public FaceTime. Public are FaceTime. quite literally the worst. Go fuck yourself. Yes. If you're on public FaceTime, there's Jump something. off a bridge. Please. Advocating the suicide. Please. Yes. <laughs> I don't leave <blame> yourself. <laughs> um, so uh, she's FaceTiming with whoever. I guess her son and her daughter. Oh, they have kids. But do they have names? Oh. Because she was calling them son and daughter. <laughs> she was like, daughter. What if that is their name? It could have been their name. Wow. She's like, daughter, you're so crazy. Don't talk to your grandma like that. Like, I mean, full that's kind of cute. Shut however, up, daughter. However, it's like when the dad says your son is on the phone and he's angry with you or yes. something. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like only dads do that. Yeah. Or like full name. Yeah. Oh, full yeah. Middle name. Yeah. Well, she then decides that she is going to talk to her son and he's doing something a little feminine. Oh. oh. And she says, no, you don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, you got to be a boy. You ain't going to grow up to be gay. And then she caught herself, looks over at me and Evan, and Evan and I are like, did this bitch just fucking say that? And she goes, no, no, I'm sorry, y'all. No, I love everybody. I love oh Jesus. Jesus loves everybody. No, y'all, no, that's not who I am. He's talking to his grandma. That I, uh, 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 and like gets up and walks this out. This is happening in Santa Monica. In Santa Monica. Oh, and man. Evan and I were like, we're just, did we just get hate crimed in the vet ER? Wow. So then the staff comes over. And they're like, we are so sorry. This is totally uh, <laughs> yeah. un in uh, inappropriate. Yeah. We were very, very, very sorry. That was out of line. Yeah. And we were just kind of like, it was. It could, was out could of we line. have a private room. Is this free now? We're harmed. <laughs> yes. So I was just like, But oh. is the dog okay, though? She's fine. They okay. just gave her, like, some hydration because she threw up all this water. And Well, at least one of us made it out of the vet. <sighs> I know. Happy. And then this morning, she ate one of my plants. So oh. we'll see what happens when I get see, home after no, this. this is what... Because, I mean, I, of course, I'm an animal person, so I'm considering getting another pet at some mm -hmm. point. But, like... Dogs just seem like a lot of work. She is totally, she is a sweetheart. I don't know if it's the move that's like freaking her out oh, or whatever, probably. but like she's never eaten like just random shit. When we take her for a walk, she'll be like, that looks fun. And she'll like yeah. put it in her mouth, but she doesn't like swallow it. So like this, I woke up to a crash on the floor. I'm like, someone's breaking into my apartment. Oh my God. And she had like knocked over like one of my favorite plants in the oh. entire home. And you know ripped, you're gay if you have a favorite plant. I know, but don't tell the other yeah, plants. I mean, um, but like just shredded the flower, and yeah. I'm just kind of like, Frida. well, maybe maybe Frida's the one who's committing a hate crime. Maybe she she's is. the one who took a lesson from that lady at the vet and was like, I'm living with a couple of. Fans. Yeah, she. <laughs> yeah, I need to. I need to go in the light of Jesus. Yeah, someone needs to tell yeah. them that it's not June anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yes. Pride is over. Pride is over, Thank and God. so are you. Um, but I mean, everyone is alive and well. However, it was not a, everyone. I know. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it was the Jewish guild. It's coming. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by our friends at Pretty Boy Men's Skincare. You guys, I've been talking about Pretty Boy for so long now, and I'm so excited to welcome them as our new sponsors for the Just Saying podcast. I have been so bad when it comes to moisturizing and taking care of my skin. And a few years ago, I went online and I was introduced to Pretty Boy Skincare. 
And I was a little skeptical, and then I ordered it. It is a six-in-one moisturizer um, that you apply daily. I highly recommend it. It takes away spots, redness, dark circles, fine lines. It is a six-in-one dream. It's simple. It's lightweight, non-greasy products that worked. They actually just came out with a face wash that I highly, highly recommend. I'm so glad that they are actually partnering with this podcast because I just can't get enough of them. So guys, moisture is very important. It is very important to take care of your skin. You've only got one. And ladies, if you are looking for that perfect gift for your man in your life, I highly recommend getting Pretty Boy Men's Skin Care. Here's the thing. I have never had Botox or fillers or anything, but people think I have, and I think pretty boy for it. My skin looks at the top of its game and I use it every day. They just actually came out with a new face wash that is so good and it's so good for your skin. It's nourishing and it is just, I can't speak highly of it anymore. It's just so good of a product. It was chosen as GQ's number one moisturizer for a reason. Pretty Boy is all about results without the fuss. It's so minimal. You just put a dop in your hand and put it all over and you're done. I have it on right now. I have it on every episode of this podcast. I can't stress how much I love this product. And if you want to do something simple and effective, you need to check Pretty Boy out. Use code Justin at checkout for 15% off. That's code Justin at checkout for 15% off. You're welcome, Pretty Boys. It was a weekend. Yeah. yeah. A weekend. Yeah. It was like just nonstop. It we was. lost... Four people. I know. Four icons. Yes. Shelly Duvall. Oh, my God. What? Uh, Hello. I'm Shelly Duvall. Hello. I'm Shelly Duvall. Like, Hello. Uh, Shelly Duvall. I mean, Shining, mm. um, uh, Fairy Tale Theater. Yeah, I saw you thinking for her credits. I know. I saw, I saw you being like, what are the three things I know about Shelly she, Duvall? She did so much, though. She did so much. She, I mean, she, chewed she gum on SNL. Popeye. Popeye, yeah. Yeah, but she also famously, I mean, she won Peabody Awards for her children programming. Like, she yeah. was like an iconic producer mm -hmm. of television in the 1980s and 90s. Mm -hmm. Like, she, pretty great. I was very sad to see her passing. Yeah. Followed up with Dr. Ruth. Oh, God. The woman who made it okay to talk about anal sex. Really? Like, I mean, she, like, who knew that this, and she, like, her parents, like, died in the Holocaust. Yeah, I like, remember that. This woman, like, survived, and then she was like, you know what, 1980s, I'm gonna talk about butt sex. Well, because she was, like, three foot two and could get away with it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. honestly, she was just, Iconic. like, she was just a small little package. Mm -hmm. She had this, like, this these like idiosyncrasies and was just upbeat and laughed and giggled and yeah you know and then you had Sue who was like the Canadian version of I her mean, oh. she, she's amazing I would love to she, have the had power that. behind her desk I mean she pulled out the toys she that pulled you out would not, the dildos I have used because I've never used Dr Ruth in a lip sync but I have used Sue in a lip sync before oh absolutely talking about blowjobs I think yeah yeah she was iconic and yeah. oh. So sad. 90, I think she was 96. I mean, yeah. if you hit that age, like... Good for you. Good for you. Good for good you. Good for you. Yeah. And then we had Richard Simmons. That one hit me so... Did you ever work out at Simmons Slimmons? No. I did. Yeah, and tell I, us all about pictures it. Pictures to prove it. Incredible. I have no rhythm whatsoever. Like okay. Like, zero rhythm. And he would yell out across the room, I hope your parents have money! Because, like... <laughs> I hadn't. I wasn't good at the aerobics. Like because I just you not, didn't take dance class. I literally do an aerobics class like a straight man trying to be empathetic. Like I just, it's like I can't. It's like it's That's like hard. In, it's like physically impossible. That's genetically hard. impossible. Mm -hmm. It's really bad. I. I'm like so bad at it. But yeah, he was so sweet. And then there was another time where he, we were leaving the class and my mom loved Richard, Richard Simmons. And so he, I had my, I called my mom. And of course she wasn't home because she never picks up her goddamn phone because it's you never hear that, charged. Mom? <laughs> and she, um, Richard left her a voice message and then she used that voice message as her answering machine message for like years. And it was completely, like it wasn't an answering machine message you would use. It would be like, Kathy, this is Richard Simmons. But her voice But her her voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's so, so insane. So people were like, did I get the wrong yeah. number? She had so many missed calls for years. Oh, years. I know, but it was like, yeah. uh, 
Amazing, you, amazing human. I know, but where do you? What do you think happened? Did you listen to the podcast about yeah, like, where's Richard Simmons? I kind of was a little. I so okay, here's the thing. Yeah, like Richard Simmons said many times, especially after the podcast, that he left intentionally. That he like retired intentionally because of the way people talked about him, mm-hmm. and it was like he was a sensitive soul. So I'm kind of like, and he was like good out of every you. joke, but also too. If I get to an age, like you saw me before we started recording, I put on makeup. I made sure that I looked at least presentable for the situation. Uh-huh. The moment I don't look presentable to either be on camera or be behind a microphone, I'm pulling a Richard. I'm hiding. <laughs> I'm going to the woods. I'm doing a Shelley Duvall. I'm moving to Texas and talking to aliens. Like, I am uh, Can full, we go there now? Yes. That I am sounded full, like a little bit fun. Full on hiding. Yeah. I don't want anyone to see me because I want people to remember me when I'm like look good. Yeah. There's a reason why in In Memoriams, they don't show you on your fucking deathbed. Yeah, they like, show you when you were like, yeah, hi. I'm, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you were like sex ready, yeah. Dr. Ruth. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> but then we lost Shannon Doherty. It's kind of, I, here's the sad thing. When four celebrities die within the span of like a weekend, a weekend, <laughs> It's sad to be the addendum to that death party. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, because I feel like everyone's talking about Dr. Ruth or Shelley Duvall or Richard Simmons, and Shannon's just sort of like, I died too. I know. Shannon's totally getting, um, uh, what's her name? Last of the Party vibe? No, what's, who's the one that, uh, Michael Jackson died and then, oh, uh, uh, Farrah, Angels, Fawcett. Farrah Fawcett. Farrah Fawcett died. She's getting the Farrah Fawcett yeah. treatment. Which is so sad because yeah. Farrah Fawcett, I mean, Farrah Fawcett. Farrah Fawcett was cooler than Michael Jackson. Of course. I mean, in, in the gay scheme of things. Yes. I think we would always side with the Farrah Fawcett's and not the Michael Jackson's yeah. in the world. But it is really, really sad, apparently. But Shannon was cool. She's very cool. I mean, yeah. she was in Charmed. She was in Beverly Hills Nando 2 and 0. Yeah. She was like a child actress. She was in Heathers. Heathers. I know. Uh, Although I think she did like, yeah, she was in a lot of things. She was in a lot. She was in but like Little she, House on the Prairie. Podcast. I mean, I, I had cancer, and like the fact that she, the way she talked about cancer and like surviving and and living with cancer and the way that she did, and then also eventually knowing she was going to die, like amazing. Yeah, amazing woman. And also too, I like that you remember in the '90s she was kind of like the, the bad, bad girl. girl, and she never did the whole like. You know, Lindsay Lohan in the interview with Oprah. Yeah. She never had that moment. She was like, I'm cleaning up. I'm going to be whatever. She was always just like, no, I'm the bad girl. She's like, I'm drunk. I'm smoking cigarettes. Fuck yeah. off. I'm going to fuck up Beverly Hills 90210 yeah. and leave early. And I'm going to fuck up Charm and leave early. Like, I'm going to do all the things and be like, I'm going to live my life. Good for her. Good for her. You know what? Good for her. We only do Shannon once in a while. I, yes, exactly. Yeah. And Shelly Duvall and uh, sometimes, and Richard Simmons yeah. and Hyde and Dr. Ruth and talk about butt sex. Exactly. Like, we need to be all of them. That is my pride lineup next year. <laughs> that's honestly, <laughs> that's my gay cella. I like that's that. It. I like that. I know. It, so, and she had this like weird divorce that yes. she was going through. Yeah. And it says that she finally settled the divorce from her husband, Kurt Iswarienko. Mm-hmm. Okay. One day before she died. Yeah. Uh, that's so Shannon. I know. But Shelly Winters did that too. I think she got married to the man, I married or divorced or something literally like the day before she died. Ugh. Like something crazy. I don't know, we have to Google it. But Shelly Winters, I love Shelly Winters. I I mean, it's just really, I'm just like, I'm like really bummed. Like, cause it's, uh, well then Trump had to go and get shot too. And then there's that. Yeah. I mean, my God, I didn't want to like talk about politics. No, we don't have to talk we, about it. But, but like, we it have saying. to like it address like, it. The fact that like Richard Simmons, they, they announced it literally because I was in, so okay. Yeah. I was shopping at an outlet mall outside Palm Springs. Lucky. When all of this was happening. And I was with my boyfriend and another friend and we were at the um, uh, Yves Saint Laurent store. Mm. And we were just shopping around, doing the things. And all of a sudden, I see that Richard Simmons died. And I'm like, oh God. Oh God! So I have to find the picture of me and Richard and post about it. Of course, I mean that's legit. That's, that's what I have. We to were do. best friends. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> and my, it's my mom's voice message. I know. And so then, as that's happening, they annu- it's announced that Trump got shot, like literally minutes after the yeah. news about Richard Simmons. And so then I was like, my first concern. This is going to sound horrible, but my first concern. Yes, I was concerned that Trump got shot. That's a bad thing. I don't want him hurt because I don't want anyone hurt. Right. But I also was like. If this fucking upstages Richard Simmons, if Richard Simmons gets the Farrah Fawcett treatment, uh-huh. I'm gonna be pissed. Yes, because Richard Simmons deserves more. Yeah, we owe him more. Well, and here's where I was. 
I feel like every generation, if there is like an assassination attempt or, you know, like I like growing up, I always heard my parents being like, I remember where I was when JFK yeah, was assassinated. Yeah. And it was like a horrible thing. Like teachers would run into the classroom. School screaming, was shut early. Crying. Yeah. yeah. I don't have a TV yet in my place. I have a TV, but we're moving Shocking. it to the guest room oh. and it's just unplugged. And we're waiting for a task rabbit to come over and do it all. Here you go, bragging task rabbit guest room. I mean, you got money. <laughs> yeah. uh, those are code words for I'm financially stable, but I don't want to say it. <laughs> well, let's not go that far. Yeah. The credit card's still working. Oh, yeah. So, um, we are getting a new TV for Prime Day. Oh, wonderful. This week. So you're stable uh -huh. and taking deals away and from people who deals. need them. Yes, yes, I love supporting okay. small businesses. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh -huh. um, and, um, so we didn't have TV on. So we are literally just like rearranging stuff. I'm like, let's put this picture over here. This mirror would look nice here. And I get a text message and it's like, oh my God, Trump was tried to be, or someone tried to assassinate Trump. And yeah. I'm like, so Evan, should we move the mirror <laughs> Literally. over here? Like, I honestly... That's how people were in the store, too. I Because I'm so, I'm, I'm so plugged into news. I'm yeah. I'm one of those people. And, like, I immediately think, and even my friends were like, do you want to stop and, like, you know, read about this? Like, And I'm like, no, 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 let's keep going because I want to go to Prada, which I did. <laughs> I wanted some Prada sunglasses. <laughs> but I, I, but as I'm walking to Prada, I was also reading all of the news. Yeah. And great Prada outlet store, by the way. You should go to that Palm Springs Mall. I have. It's, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's fantastic. It didn't end up buying anything, <laughs> but still. Um, and I, but, but, but I was thinking like, why is no one else on their phones? Why is no, like I was, I was waiting for the JFK moment when everyone yes. was sort of like, no, and nobody stopped. They were just like, how do I see that JLo poster at the coach store? Like, Oh, which it looks kind of like a Shrek poster. Like, she needs like to go. Yeah, it's yeah. very strange. But like, it's a uh, it's a very weird poster. But like, people weren't concerned. No, they were just eating their Wetzel pretzel. And I'm not trying to sound insensitive. Again, I'm with you. I felt like I think it was totally like it was shocking. Shocking. But I think the thing with me now is this: is that I'm so numb. I am too. To all of it. Yeah. I'm numb to. Every shooting that's happening in this country, I'm numb to anything that but guy says that comes out of his mouth. I don't just, think that's because of the news, though, because I feel like homosexuals in particular are born numb to... Because, like, I... Like, for example, going back to the veterinarian office, yeah. like, I had no shame in just barking out orders while I'm bawling in front of strangers. Sure, sure. And I'm not embarrassed. I have nothing. And I'm numb to the idea of embarrassment. Mm -hmm. I'm, I just don't have it. So I feel like homosexuals, in particular, queer people in particular, are just sort of like, fuck it, I'm going to be me. And if that means yelling and screaming and being dramatic in this moment, or not reacting to a certain thing, or not caring about a certain thing, it kind of goes with the territory. I think, us, yeah, I, I was born this numb. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like that's the song that we need. Oh God, the Lady Gaga Born This Way song. It's literally an SNL sketch. It, I've been thinking about that a lot. Well, hold on. It's yeah. not... We have our... We got an SNL sketch of, of some music this oh, week. I'm ready for it. I'm yeah. excited for this topic. But but going back to it, and that's all I'm going to say about this, it, It's I, it was just it's wild. wild. And now everyone's running with it. And now I... And honestly, with the... God, the theater of it, the... It's more cinematic. You can't even... The timing is so... Like a like Air Force One 2 with, Har with Harrison Ford. Get off which, my plane! Which, to the point yeah. where now he picked J.D. Vance as mm -hmm. a VP pick. And J.D. Vance famously wrote Hillbilly Elegy, which was Glenn Close's last Oscar nomination, which she lost for the eighth time. Oh, to who? Frances McDormand? Oh, I don't know who she lost to that year. No, it wasn't Frances, though. It was someone, because it was a best supporting situation. Oh, okay. Um, So no one cared. No but one gives a it, shit. Yeah, but no, but she lost again. So that means then, Glenn Close played the vice president in Air Force One. I don't know where the connections are with Whoa. this, but I feel like Matrix. Trump, after that situation, watched Air Force One, oh. saw Glenn Close, thought of J.D. Vance, picked him. Yeah. Well, now, I mean, everyone's saying like, oh, we're making it about the left. The shooter was a registered Republican. Yeah. But we will not talk about yeah. that, will we? But also, we? I don't think that matters at all it's anymore, just the, the, either, too. Because I'm a reg I'm registered as weighing like 210 pounds on my same. license, which is yeah. not yeah. true at all. Yeah. So, like, 
It's like the official registrations of things mm. do not matter. These People days. were were assuming that I was on Ozempic, and I was oh, like, "Girl, no, I just I had, am on Ozempic. I I had food poisoning. Oh, it's quicker and easier. Is it? Yes, it's, uh, it's way easier. I always think food poisoning is fake, but uh, well, I think everything is fake nowadays. Yeah, okay. I like watched the video, and I was like, "This is some Apprentice editing yeah, NBC yeah. bullshit." And then, although I, I don't get into the conspiracy theories, people I can't. I can't do it. People It'll drive me crazy. Crazy into the conspiracy I know. theories. I'm like, how are you this dumb? I know. Like, literally, when I hear people, I had I had family members texting me full on conspiracy theories, and I'm like, you're an intelligent person. <laughs> how is what went wrong? Where what happened? Uh -huh. And on both sides, uh -huh. Republican and Democrat, people are going crazy. Well, and just the whole like him getting him ducking behind, it, and he's like, wait, 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 picture. Oh my God! It was it's like. like I don't think Trump is smart enough to no. stage this kind of theater. And I don't think Democrats are organized enough to do it. No. Like, I don't think anyone is smart enough to have the conspiracies to be true. Well, here's the conspiracy theory that I'm going to give you. Okay. Donald Trump stole that pose oh. from the little boy in Free Willy <gasps> when Willy is freed and flies over the rocks to the Michael Jackson song, oh, wow. Say You'll Be There, or Could You Be There. <laughs> Put the music, very dark side of the moon, yeah. with Trump getting up and doing that. I can fits see it. perfectly to a T. Did you ever, I always <laughs> thought, I always thought when that, when that whale went over yeah. that boy, that, I don't know aerodynamics. There but, it is. But I feel like, I feel like that's not, a, I don't think a whale goes like that. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the picture of Free Willy poster. Mm -hmm. I don't think that a whale can bend that way. But also, I feel like th there wouldn't be enough force. The boy would die. Well, if this was a San Diego whale, yes. Oh. I think... The Florida whale? <laughs> this wasn't like Tillicum. No, oh. this... I think Tillicum would have taken him down and oh. and done... Yeah, but I, I agree. Is it like a like a... Because, I mean, I don't think whales jump like that over mm. rocks. Especially when they've been in captivity for, like, 25 yeah, years. Yeah, that whale is, like, basically like me through COVID. Like, okay. I, like, like walking up steps. That that whale would be so winded going to those rocks that he would just be like, well, I'm just going to stay here. Yeah, and, like, turn I'm just going to sit down. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I get it. Yeah, no. But, um, yeah, we just... We only have like a couple months left until the election. What could possibly go wrong? Mm. <laughs> this next story is really fun. Mm. So let's lighten it up a little bit. Okay. Did you hear about this um, billionaire heir named Anant Ambani? <gasps> yes. They had a three-day, $600 million wedding ceremony. Um, it was I, it was an Indian wedding, correct? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes, and I guess these are like the richest people. He is the richest person in the world. In India. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe even in the world. He's I don't up know. There, I don't he's think in the world, there. but he's up there. But I mean, I like some Saudi Arabians beat him. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. But had like this star-studded wedding uh, of the. Eras. Why was John Cena there? I ask that daily. Why? Like, why is John Cena? I'll in walk most into things? a Sweet Greens and be like, "Why is John Cena here? Why is John Cena a thing? Mm. I still don't understand. He came like, did he come from that Amy Schumer movie where he was just naked? Like, is that where he I, became? Well, a he thing? was a wrestler. Yeah, but no one cared about him as a. I mean, they cared about him as a wrestler, but we don't care about him as a wrestler. So, like, how did he become a thing that he shows up at an Indian wedding? Like, I don't know the pop culture shift from wrestler niche audience to movie star like person do we do conspiracy theories again maybe <laughs> maybe maybe so remember at the oscars when he walked out naked and everyone I was do. like this is his like blood ritual or yes. whatever yes maybe it was something about that i could see that yeah. i could see that he just seems like such he seems like he wouldn't fit in a normal chair and he just <laughs> is like not fun to be around yeah like he would be the person at disneyland who would just be like Let's go on every ride, and you're just like, I just want a fucking hot dog. Would you slow down? No, has the itinerary. Yeah, the itinerary. Guys, we're supposed to be at the Country Bear Jamboree. Yes, yes. We're going to miss the 345 and show. The, and he has the Genie Plus decked out so that every Ugh. single thing is, like, you know, marked down for yeah. time-wise. And he's tell he yeah. turns around, walks backwards, and tells people to hurry up. He's clapping. He's doing the clapping. Yeah. Why'd you wear open-toed shoes to Disney? You're not supposed to wear yeah. sandals to Disney. Yeah. Walk faster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you got blisters? Oh, well, you're going to miss Fantasmic. <laughs> 
Again. No. No. John Cena sucks. Yeah. 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 I definitely feel like John Cena burned the Maleficent dragon down to the ground. Oh, I can see that. Mm -hmm. And I also think John Cena is insanely jealous of The Rock. Absolutely. Like, insanely. Like, I don't know if they know each other. I'm sure they're wrestlers. There's so the whole wrestling community. I'm sure there's something there, but he's all like... There's David Bautista. No, what was his wrestling name? Was it just John, John Cena? Cena? Was it just John Cena? Mm -hmm. Really? I think Not so. The Rock or something? Like, something no. cool like John The Rock or John The Bust Cena? John Cena. John the, the Pebble Cena. I'm trying no, to think of No, I think it was thing. just John Cena, John Cena, which I think is kind of lame. Sad. That's like becoming a drag queen and just being like, Deborah. I would know? love Deborah though. But that would be cute. That I would, would actually, love Deborah. That yeah. Would, that would be serve. Yeah. yeah. That's totally. a big serve. Yeah. Like D E B R A. Deb, Deborah. I'm just Deborah. I'm just Deb. I'm just saying, I'm Deborah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would love that. Yeah. John Cena. This was him. Yeah. John Felix Anthony Cena. That's his full name? It's his full name. Um, can you Google John Cena naked for me? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Because it comes up in weird ways. Like, it'll show the Oscar stuff, of course. But then, yeah, it's all Oscar shit. But he had that, like, that... Uh, he has a good butt. Oh, do the one that's bl that's blurred. Oh. No. Oh, oh boring. I See, know. Google is so straight. Google is so straight. It's so, because it blurs shit that doesn't need to be blurred. That's right, Google. You know? We're hetero shaming you. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Get get it together, Google. You're yeah. so straight. Also, I mean, what is the sad diaper? I don't get it. What? A, uh, yeah, I mean, well, that was... It, it worked. I mean, it's like, look at the front. It's a low. Like, he, you guys can't see this, but like, it's... It's a low hanging fruit. It's a low. I would not lie. Those are like the cum gutter situation. What what are those called? The cum gutters? Mm -hmm. Is that what they're called? Mm -hmm. um, I'm not gay. Enough. Well, that's not their scientific name, but yes, that's what the streets call he them. He just loves to. Oh, John Cena. What a joke of a human. <laughs> Yeah. He really is. I don't think anyone can point to something that... I, there's that Amy Schumer, Tina Fey movie where they play sisters and they have a house party. I forget the name of it now. Um, but John Cena's in that as the drug dealer. And that's the only thing that I can think of that I like John Cena in. I feel like um, John Cena is kind of like the Katy Perry of the acting world. Well, that's a perfect segue. It well, yeah, but I want to finish this one. I gotta finish yeah. the wedding. So <laughs> because there's so much more. Uh so they got engaged, they've yes. been celebrating for months, and they got married. Uh their wedding party in March was attended by twelve hundred guests, including Ivanka Trump and Mark Zuckerberg. Mm. The bride does look a little like like she's frightened to be there. She should be. Yeah. She doesn't look I mean, I don't wanna say that it's not love, but when someone is the richest person in India. You shut the fuck up and go. You just go. You just do it. You just pull a succession and say, yes, I'll take the money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Buy me out. Money. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, this is... Uh... I was following Chloe because Chloe Kardashian is actually very iconic on Snapchat. And she was posting all kinds of crazy shit on Snapchat of this Indian wedding with Kim. And it... I'm I'm a Kardashian stan. Like, I, I love a Kardashian moment. And so... I was into what they were doing. Although they did just Google Indian wedding and they just like used the It's my favorite dresses. thing ever because yeah. they literally, well, they did the same thing where they were getting ready and they were adding to their stories and someone was like Indian wedding and it was the first song. Did they song. really? Yes, it was the first song no. that they used no. for their like background music. And no. I'm like, oh, you guys. Oh. And then it is a huge taboo to wear red is to it? an Indian wedding. Why? I didn't know that. Because the bride is supposed to be wearing like a red or a color like that. And Kim was like, this is about me. How many times? How many times do you think Chloe probably said to someone, I loved Slumdog Millionaire. I loved it. <laughs> I'm so glad it won Best Picture. Representation matters. Okay. Yeah. To that, I'm going to level that up because you know Kim was like, I played Jasmine on SNL. Ah! <laughs> Actually, it was me playing Jasmine yeah. that I met my ex-boyfriend, Pete. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like, you know, I just love flying carpets. Mm -hmm. And You guys have that here, right? It's a ride here, right? It's, a, it's Cheers a to you guys and a whole new world of happiness. <laughs> oh, God. Get out of here, Kim. Beat it. Yeah. And so it's funny, too, because I also saw a meme where you remember when she got robbed in yes. Paris in like yes. 2017 or yeah. something Her most like relevant that. moment in history. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it, she was on the ground. It was terrifying. Yeah. Great. Uh, That's when she made it into like, like the press. Like she knows she... Chris kept those clippings. <clears throat> Absolutely. She's fucking... That's her vision board Chris forever. Jenner is like yeah. the, the best tabloid coupon person yes. ever. She's still cutting and pasting. 
She's like, I got a Literally. coupon for that. Uh -huh. Like, so there's a clip of her on, I want to say it's Ellen, and she's saying, like, I am now a different person. I'm never yeah. doing this anymore. I'm it keeping did seem terrifying. Yeah. But then cut to this Indian wedding yeah. where she has a diamond nose ring. She's like, check out these diamonds, you guys. And How it's do like, you think Damn. they got that? Because we were talking about this this weekend, actually. Like, I don't think Kim's plane can make it to India. Like, I don't think it's meant to fly that far. So do you think they flew commercial to India? Oh, I hope they had, like, full latex faces on. Oh, my God. I hope they had, like... Like, went in, like, old man drag. That would be, like, that episode of Golden Girls where they had to sneak into the men's locker room at the, yes. the meatball. Yes! Room. Yeah. Like, that one. Wow. Like, that would have been great. I don't think they flew coach, but, you know. No. Uh, but I think they could buy out a plane. Mm -hmm. Like, that's probably, if you buy out a plane, that's probably just as much as renting a private. I mean, whatever. They made it. They had fun. Good yeah. for them. They looked good. Yeah. I mean, filters and money will do that oh. for you. Yeah, they looked good. I'm not, yeah. I'm not going to body shame her. I will say that um, also in attendance, Justin Bieber was there. I guess they paid him like $10 million Justin to perform. Bieber is kind of the John Cena of the music world at this point. Like, what Really? Is what is, what, what, how is he relevant anymore? Like, what is going on? Yeah. The last, the last most exciting thing that happened to Justin Bieber is when his little Bieber got caught on camera. Like, you know, his, his penis moment. I mean, look, there he is right there. I mean, ugh. I just don't see how anyone cares about Justin Bieber anymore. Because, like, I can't even name one thing he's done within the last two years. Can you? Thank you. I can't. Yeah, exactly. He's the John Cena of the music world. I know. Yeah. But, I mean, look, I the kids real. look happy. I like how you got, like, that felt like you got emotional. I kind of did, because I was yeah. like, well, he got married, and then his wife made a smoothie. Mar that is not relevant. He's going to be a dad, though. That's not relevancy. <sighs> what is the ability to... Calvin impregnate. Klein? Did he do that? No, yeah. That was, that was what's his name, from the bear. No, we did Calvin Klein, like, a couple years ago. A couple of years ago is two years. With I'm saying the last two years, what has he done? He released a salad dressing. Oh, he's the Paul Newman now of... <laughs> <laughs> he got nothing. Yeah, he, he's I got know. nothing. But uh, you know what? Get that 10 million, girl. Yeah, like, get it. Go, I'm all about it. I know. I'm so we'll shame money. Good for them. I'm glad everyone had a great time while yeah. I was in the vet ER. Yeah. Um, well, here's another thing. After uh, the wedding, Kim went online and she revealed that she's trying the uh, Jennifer Aniston approved salmon sperm facial. Oh, interesting. Mm. I didn't hear about this. Well, Kim's always into facials yeah. and the last one she did was the vampire facial, the one before that was the Ray J facial. Yeah, on video. And uh now she's into the good old swimming upstream row mm -hmm. facial. Mm -hmm. So, um let's see. She says, I got, I just love that she just gets into it. I got a salmon sperm facial with salmon sperm injected into my face. Yeah. She revealed to her mother, who appeared stunned on the July 11th episode of The Kardashians. Yes. <sighs> Would you get, I mean, no. you've, you've had sperm injected into your face before. Not into my face. <laughs> Never in your face. Not even by accident? No. Wow. That's surprising. Well, I feel like, because I mean, We've known each other for a long time. I mm -hmm. feel like at some point, sperm must have hit your face. You know, I'm kind of classy when it comes to that, so I'll... Not even by accident. Because sometimes that just goes everywhere. Salmon? Yeah. <laughs> That's what we can call it. When they... Salmon. When they swim upstream? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, these... The facials themselves have been popular in Korea for years and promise to boost collagen, increase cell turnover, and help with pigmentation issues. Who are these people? I will always trust Korean skincare. I will too. Because have you, like, Koreans look amazing. And these these K-pop stars look incredible. Snatched. So if they're putting sperm into their face, we, they're on to I'm something. ready. Yeah. Give me a bowl of sperm and I'll put my face in it. Like, I will do it. If a Korean tells me to do it, Could I'll do it. you imagine if you just signed up for Fear Factor and they're like, <laughs> or like, what is that James Corden, like, when they have to eat the weird shit? And they're like, we have a Wait, bowl of I salmon James sperm. James Corden's used to eating the weird shit. I know, yeah. I know. But you're just like, thanks, I'll take it from here. Yeah, I would do it. I would have no, yeah. I would have no problem. Like on Survivor and all those shows, like if you make me eat something, I have, I can swallow very easily. Like I'm like a good, I don't even have, like I don't, there'll be no taste in my mouth. It'll just be a, <clears throat> 
you oh. know? Because I have a very large tongue. So it adds like a, a layer of, it goes down fast. You know mm. what I mean? Like I just, I wouldn't taste it. Just inhale it. Just yeah. <gasps> But I also don't mind things getting on my face either. Because I'm just like, you know what? I'll wash it off. It's fine. Well, hers is injected into your, her face. Well, if it's injected, it's, you know, hello today, gone tomorrow. Like, who cares? Like, put it in then. <sighs> I'm not opposed to sperm. Well, Jennifer Aniston did say afterwards that the, the injections, she didn't see that much of a change in her skin afterwards. Oh. So it could just be all fad and hype. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I do love a good facial, though. Yeah. Like, I would I would be down for this. For the salmon injections? Yeah, sure. See, Can I... You just put salmon on your face, though? I feel like that would be a good idea. Like, just a fish? Like just a sla salmon on your mm, face. Just a slap of... Like, a, go, to, <laughs> go to Seattle, just let them hit it <laughs> yeah. in the face with it. And the fucking... I've heard great things about your salmon facial. <laughs> Cut to... <laughs> cats, are, cats are gnawing at your face. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, like... I'm... I'm <sighs> Who, A, thought of this and was like, you know what we should do is do this. But also the horror lover in me. Like, I love... That's my favorite genre Ooh. ever. Ooh. I go into like the fish growing out of the egg. Like I feel like oh, like yeah. baby fish. Do you ever fish. worry about like a fruit fly flying yes, in like your bot ear, fly. and then it, it expand? They they have more, and then it all Ugh. they're all in your ear, yeah. and then they fly out of your ear like mm -hmm. a music video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you want like good night terrors for like a good three weeks, yeah. Google uh, bot flies. Wow. Bleh. Wow. Terrifying. That's crazy. That stuff doesn't really bother me though, because I'm. Frankly, Kim's like, put it in me. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Kim. I'm like Kim here, in that like, I'm just sort of like, well, if it works for them, it'll probably work for me. Uh, Go with God. Go with God. Go with God, you guys. Yeah. Well, good for Kim and her salmon sperm. Good for her. Uh, here's She's had worse. She said worse. Well, speaking of worse, Gypsy Rose Blanchard <laughs> oh uh, announced over the weekend that she is pregnant with possum. Yes. And um. Trolls are using her baby registry to send hate messages. Now, Gypsy Rose, she... Can we talk? I need to say something about Gypsy Rose. Please do. Go on. So, okay. The, the documented three men that she's been with. Mm -hmm. One, she convinced to murder her mother. Mm -hmm. Went to prison. Still in jail. Yeah. Still in jail. The second, she met as a pen pal while in jail, and he knows about her because she got a man to murder her mother. Right. The third, similar situation, and... She has only met men through association of pen pals <laughs> and 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 her getting men to murder her mom. Basically, yeah. uh -huh. this is not how you date. This is not how you find men. I know, or the father of your children. I'm worried about her. Like, I'm not extent. worried about her at all. I'm not either. I'm just yeah. saying, like, si since she was in prison for what, like, ten years, a little, a little under, and like then eight. she gets out and she's like j immediately jumps on Instagram. Yeah, she's catching up with all the lingo and she's like. You need to worry about yourself. I got a Chad. And yeah. you're like, oh, stop, Gypsy, please. It's just, and the sad thing about it is that, like... No one's there to tell her no. Well, no one's there to tell her no, but also, too, sorry, bitch. I'm going to say it, but, like, I'm, I'm glad she was abused as a child, and that's horrible. <laughs> that doesn't, it doesn't mean that, like, she it warranted murdering her mom yeah. or anything. But the reason why she only spent eight years in prison for assisting in the murder of her mom is because of her immense privilege as a white person. There it if is. she was not a white person, A, it would never have been a documentary. B, we never would have even probably heard of this case. And C, she would have been in prison probably for life. Yeah. So like... Maybe stop being all like checking people for coming bad at you hard and giving you shit when it's like, maybe check your privilege and recognize that you could do some reform, which she says she's doing. Well, we'll see. I don't, I, all I hear her talking about is the amount of time she's had sex with her husband. I know. She's pregnant. like, I get the D all the time. It's yeah. Like, Shut up, it's girl. It's like, if you're actually going to do anything, do something. Yeah. Can we go back up to the uh, top of this real quick? This is the, the guy, I guess, that she is. Yeah, Ken. I don't like it. Who is like he? It. Well, he was a pen pal in prison no. that she was initially dating, and then the new guy came along because they broke up over letters or something. And then 
she broke up with that guy and then got back with this dude. And now she's pregnant with her own baby. And all of this is happening. The timing of the pregnancy, the timing of her being on the Kardashians, the time of her all these things is all weeks before her show is about to premiere, which I'm like, did she get pregnant to promote the show? Which, honestly... Sounds very Kris Jenner to me. It does sound very Kris Jenner. It does sound very Kris Jenner. She's like, Gypsy, we're going to Dubai. (laughs) I mean, it's... uh, I don't know. I feel like... Good for her, but I just feel like this baby's going to be the death of her one day. Her popularity and existence... (laughs) Literally, it will be the death of her. (laughs) But her popularity and existence is, like, what makes me... I'm not even concerned about the impact of Trump on the election. I'm concerned about why we're obsessed with Gypsy Rose Lee. I don't get it either. I don't understand it. And you know what? Maybe don't make your registry public. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep it to yourself. Maybe. You're like, oh, my God, these people are coming after me. What what do you want? She wants the attention. Of course. It's all about the attention. We love attention. Yes. Um, Well, here's some fun facts about about uh, possum moms. Okay. Because I do call Gypsy Rose America's favorite possum. It's true. Uh, possum not, mothers. Not in the cute Dame Edna way that she would call everyone possum. No, 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 no. no. Like, no. have you ever seen a possum and Gypsy Rose in the same place? No. <laughs> no. Possum moms can give birth to six to 25 babies, but the average litter is six to nine, which is Gypsy's favorite number. How do you know that? Because don't you think it would be? She'd I mean, be like, it would be. Hey guys, it would be. want a 69? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go get raw dogged on the theater floor watching you Cinderella. Did you see that video of her doing that? Where her husband was being like, yeah, we just relaxed all day. And she's like, yeah, we were really relaxing. Uh, I was taking the D all uh, day. I relaxed by sitting on deck. Oh, God. I can't even, I can't wink my right eye. Oh. Yeah. You got it? I, I had surgery. I was cross-eyed when I was a kid, and I think this eye is, like, fucked up because of it, and I can't wink properly. Oh, I don't my know. God. The curse yeah. of Gypsy Rose. I know! <laughs> yeah. um, so they have a, let's see, the gestation period for possums is 13 days. So we've got, like, maybe a couple Another, weeks left. Yeah, like, yeah. a week left. Uh, baby possums are born hairless and blind and are smaller than a honeybee or a grain of rice. Hairless and blind. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a dream, actually. <laughs> Honestly, do you know, I mean, every time I get in drag, the amount of shaving I have to do, if yeah. I could just not look at myself in the mirror or have any body hair, it would be perfect. Oh my God, you're blind and I'm hairless. Wow. I'm hair. I have no body hair. None? None. I have so much. None. I'm covered. Just nothing. I mean, I've always, that's... I've always, and my mom was like, it's because you're you have Native American blood. I took a 23 in me. There's nothing Native American in me at all. <laughs> Lies, mom. Lies. I'm six percent Turkish. Oh wow. Was not invited to the wedding. Yeah. Um uh let's see. The development of a possum baby. Uh the baby's nurse continuously for about two months, during which time their teats, mm, I love the mm. word teat, swell to help them stay attached. Oh, wow. After two months, the babies open their eyes and start to leave the pouch, riding on their mother's back as she hunts for food. They become independent at around four months of age. Oh. The mortality rate, because we're all talking Gypsy they Rose run here. Run over. Well, 10 to 25% of the babies will expire while still in the pouch. Um, and fewer than 10% of those that survive weaning live past a year. That's crazy. Yeah. And they just carry around the dead baby. While just the a other rotted pouch. Like, yeah. Wow. So Gypsy Rose, check that fanny pack girl because <laughs> wherever no. you registered. Uh, but there she is. There's her little her little possum pouch. <laughs> little bump also, showing. She's yeah. taking pictures. It's just, it's just all, I can't with Gypsy. I'm I know. I can't. I can't. It's just the nose job, all of it. And we cover it. We cover it. Like, it's like, like she's like up there with the housewife. Oh, I know. And here's the thing. Just do Dancing with the Stars already. Just and do sh- it. Shut up. Just do it. Just get on the goddamn show. You know she's voting for Trump. <laughs> you just know Gypsy Rose is a Trumper. You know that's her next move is Gypsy Rose <laughs> as being out there like being like, I would have taken a bullet for him. Oh, like, yeah. You just know it. Yeah. Can't kill a daytime possum. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Can't keep a good possum down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if rabies won't kill me, neither will a boy. Oh, God. Love you, Mom. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know. I'm sure we need to make Make, a, make America possum again. Yes. Shit. Like hats. Like that would be great. Oh. Mappa. <laughs> um, well, let's get into some uh, some gay stuff. Matt Bomer, Nathan Lane. Oh. Yes. I, mean, I I've heard about I this. I DM'd with Matt about this. 
Go on. Well, yeah. here's the headline. Matt Bomer and Nathan Lane to start in the Golden Girls like Hulu sitcom from Ryan Murphy and Will and Grace creators. Yes. James Burroughs will direct the pilot. So in case you didn't know. Did you see the video of them doing the table read? No. Max, the creator of the show um, did. Uh, he also created um, Will and Grace. Yes. He posted a story of the table read and it was Linda Lavin, uh. Nathan Lane and Matt Bomer sitting right next to each other. Can I tell you how much I love Matt Bomer? Yes, as you should. Matt, I interviewed Matt Bomer uh, a while ago, and then uh, we he followed me on Instagram, which I was like, holy hell. So I was like, yeah, well, I'm going to make him my new friend. Yeah, absolutely. And so we we have a couple little, you know, like this casual back and forth. Nothing crazy. I'm not going to over overstep my my boundary here as Matt Bomer's um, slight BFF. Not fully BFF, but I'm like, I, I feel adjacent. like in my head, because I can message him, I'm in the, the BFF territory. The access is great. Yes, the access is there. Yeah. And we talked about, because I have a Golden Girls tattoo, um, and we talked about... Where, where, where? On my arm. Can we see and it or we no? We can, yes, we can. Oh, yeah. I mean, but that's also going to ruin my image. Oh, here, but basically. Elliot has one, too. Yes. Yeah, so <gasps> <better. Mine's gasps> oh, wow. Better. That's really better. good. Yeah, it is. Um, thank you. But, yeah. uh, so we talked about my Golden Girls tattoo and, and how he, him being in Maestro and me doing Go Dorothy's voice when she was like, how about something with a little Ike Octane Maestro or whatever? <laughs> and um, and so we have that going back and forth. And then when this was announced, I immediately was like, bleh, bleh. yeah, of course. And so yeah, I Matt, I, it, this is very exciting. Well, let's see. It's, it's the the show is going to be called Mid Century Modern, yeah. which is a multi cam series for Hulu, executive produced by Ryan Murphy and created by Will and Grace, mm -hmm. Max Muchnick, and David Cohen. Sources reveal that Bomer will take on the ditzy rose like character played by Betty White in the original Golden Girls, with Lane taking on the Dorothy of the bunch. Makes sense. Linda Lavin will play Lane's mother, a la the original Sophia. Yeah. I think this is a genius premise. I think set in Palm Springs. I think it's genius. I think it's smart. I think it's funny. I think it has the right team behind. If anyone's going to do it, it's going to be Max. And it, it, it's just. I think it's. I think it's genius. I yeah. think we need this. This is our pride. We need to stop having pride outdoors, and we need to start <laughs> having pride inside. inside in air conditioning, watching Hulu Ryan Murphy projects. I agree. I, I think completely agree. Genius pride. Yeah, yeah, like save save those rainbow streamers yes. and balloons, yes. and stop killing the earth and just watch a flick. Also, I want Matt Bomer to, I mean, I want Nathan, Nathan Lane is the Henri Gay that we need in the mm -hmm. world, but Matt Bomer, what's so interesting, because I wanted to hate him. I wanted to go. I wanted to hate Matt Bomer I, too. I went into that interview being like, I'm going to hate this oh, beautiful you piece of man. son of a man. bitch, you chiseled and then, fuck. And then he turned out to be the nicest, the nicest person. coolest, like followed through, I like know. followed up, like messages. He liked my fucking birthday post. How dare he? How are you this nice Matt Bomer? What's wrong with like, you? No one that attractive should be this nice, but I'm so grateful that I'm I his know. BFF. I know, as yeah. you should be. I, yeah, mean, I mean, he doesn't call me or anything. No, but, like, but not, yet. not yet. Not yet. Not yet. And also when I watched him in Fellow Travelers, oh. I, was, uh, I know. Oh, I know, fella. Oh, Jonathan Bailey. You should listen to that chat between us because we talked about we talked about the Bailey of it all too. What? Yeah. What do you mean? The gifts, the videos, the things on Twitter. We've all seen them. We know it. But we know how steamy it was. I know. And I tried to approach it in the most professional way, but then I was just like, "Why are you my fantasy?" Yeah. You know, quivering. Jonathan Bailey. Do you know how much I? and begging for an interview with Jonathan Bailey. Begging. Oh. To his team, I was like, do you want some coffee? Do you yeah. want me to go do anything? Do you want me to, I mean, I'll do a social media, like whatever you He's want. He's just the dreamiest. He He's is. honestly like, that's like my my pass, I think. Yeah. Oh, really? I think so. Oh, interesting. Like I could go like the like muscly route, but I just feel like there's just something so, I feel like Matt Bomer is too like Americana. He's too like, like like godly like he's just like it's almost like even watching him I, I i knew jake gyllenhaal too and he has the same similar thing in that like you look at them and you're like you're a fucking movie star yeah like your hair everything it's perfect. very like clark kent's yes. like brother yes whereas jonathan bailey is approachable in that like if you saw him in a sauna he might sit next to you right but also like he looks like 
that abandoned dog by the railroad. Yeah. Yes, a little bit. There's something wrong with like him. something trampy about something him. happened to him. Carpet you're like, bag, you're hot. hot, but like you have an edge. Yes. I don't know who my my pass would like have to a be. hot orphan. My pass would have to be a straight man who would let me look at him naked. Okay. I think like that, John Cena. No. <gasps> I feel like it would be a Darren Chris. I feel like it would be a Darren Chris. Darren Chris would totally do that. He would. Yeah. He'd be fine with it. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's just like, oh, you guys, fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the series follows three best friends. Mm-hmm. Gay gentlemen of a certain age. Ooh. 35. How many Botox jokes will there be? Oh, there's going to be so much Botox. Yeah. There might be a, um old queen. And how many times will Nathan Lane go? Yes. Like, with, the, with glasses down, sassy response. Yeah. Totally. Um, so after an unexpected death, they decide to spend their golden years living together in Palm Springs where the wealthiest one lives with his mother and a naked Gen Z housekeeper. Yeah. Uh, Hulu says in a release that mid-century modern stars Nathan Lane as Bunny Schneiderman, okay. Matt Bomer as Jerry Frank, and Linda Lavin as Sybil Schneiderman, Bunny's mother. Who's the naked house boy is what I want to know. It's going to be... Probably a Brian Jordan Alder- Alvarez or something. Probably. It's he's so, usually cast in those kinds. It's the naked house. He used to run through my old neighborhood in jeans, mm-hmm. like jean shorts. Mm-hmm. Like he went jogging in, in Converse shorts, shorts and yeah. or Converse shoes and jean cut off shorts. It's a reach. And I was just like, I like you, Brian, but we know you're begging for us to look at you. Well, everyone is now. Yeah, it's true. You know, no what judgment. I, mean? I know. No judgment. I will rubber like neck in a heartbeat. Just yeah. blur, like. Yeah. Uh, um, I'll put sperm things in my face just for you to look at me more. Yeah, please. Yeah. Please, please, please. <laughs> oh, Sabrina. <laughs> me too. Um, a successful businessman with one foot in retirement, Bunny is forever in search of love, but he first has to be convinced he's worthy of it. Like her son, Sybil's strengths are her weaknesses. Wise, caring, and iconoclastic, which sometimes means she's critical, smothering, and immoral. Jerry left the Mormon church, there it is, oh. and his marriage in his early 20s after his wife informed him and the rest of the congregation that he was a homosexual. Oh. Now a Latter-day Saint in the literal sense of the term, Jerry is pure of heart. He is also hard of body and soft of head. See what they did that? Absolutely. Now a Latter-day Saint. Now a Latter-day saying my film is called latter day jew oh yeah that's right yeah well it's just kind of i'm here for it i am gonna say i'm a little sad why because leslie jordan would have been perfect in it i mean leslie jordan would leslie jordan yes exactly leslie would have been but but there also is an element of i like that nathan lane is in this role Uh i don't feel like it's going to be it'll be flamboyant don't get me wrong for sure but like i don't think it's going to be leslie flamboyant in no sometimes it's hard to look away from the leslie of it all so i feel like leslie just needs his own would need his own thing i feel like leslie's too big for even a show like this yeah but do you think it's gonna be like that 90s show is it gonna be like studio audience like oh i don't think so i don't know if it is it that i don't multi-cam so i don't know is this does it say Uh multi-cam oh well then maybe yeah i don't think it'll be audience i think it'll be like you know the new like the way they do multicams nowadays where there's just no studio audience. But I, I am worried though because like I don't know if I can take Matt Bomer in like a situation comedy. I don't think he's funny. Oh, he is funny. He is? I think he can be very funny. Yeah, I don't think, funny. I haven't seen him in anything that was he like... He has the ability to be, I think he recognizes funny. Okay. I think he recognizes it and I think he can be funny. I just, it's, I'm trying to imagine him in like a sitcom situation and I yeah. can't. Well, he's going to be the, I mean, they're saying he's going to be like the Betty White Right. Which was perfect for him. Like kind of like the ditzy ex pool boy kind of a vibe. I think it's perfect for him. Yeah. Perfect for him. And God, just look at him. I know. Drain. And look at Linda Lavin. I know. Talk more about Linda Lavin. I know. We need more Linda Lavin in our lives. Oh. And Nathan Lane. I'm here. We're gonna for be it. laughing with Lavin. <laughs> I hope so. Well, if, if that story doesn't make you want to sink your teeth into it, then this one will. <laughs> Did you hear that Ariana Grande is a cannibal? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't hear You this thought one. the weekend was rough. <laughs> I didn't hear Let's about this, this one. to the list. Please tell me more. Well, former guest here at the Just Saying Podcast, Frankie Grande, is jumping to Ariana Grande's defense over some viral cannibalism. Uh. <laughs> and, well, he's also trying to get attention on that nose. Oh, I mean, he kept... Po- <laughs> oh, he had the nose surgery and he kept posting about it. And I firmly believe if you have plastic surgery, talk about it, don't post about it. Like, we don't need the pictures. Show me the good looks after. Wait, 
where's the nose? Is that the nose job? I don't know. The nose hasn't healed yet because I think he just didn't. He oh, he post, just did it. He just posted about it recently. I don't know if it was a, a accident or plastic. Oh, surgery. I hope it's like the tiniest nose. No, probably. I just hope it's like a little like. I just think like if you you don't post you yes, in the immediate bandages and up. bruised. I don't and, think yeah. we need that in I this know. world. I know. Well, he's going to his sister's defense over some viral cannibalism claims on TikTok, all cooked up. <laughs> to scare fans away from buying her concert tickets. So Ariana's big bro, okay, took to X Thursday to fire at fans spreading rumors that- That was the that was the original nose, the what they were referring to, the original nose. Ariana's big bro. Okay, <laughs> all right. Girl, okay. Uh, he is, uh, he's jumping on X to fire at fans spreading rumors that cops found human remains in his sister's starter house years ago. What? He says, if you haven't seen the original TikTok, check it out. It's a good social media user making the claims without providing any sort of evidence to back up the point. But some people took it as fact and started pushing the rumor. Anyway, someone said, or Frankie has tweeted, ha 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 ha, wow, this might be the most creative and lowest y'all have ever gone. Reaching new depths daily. Listen, I know my sister's been eating the girls up for years, but this is a bit extreme. Besides, she's vegan. See you on tour. <laughs> <laughs> that the besides she's vegan is the is the racist person who's like well, I have bl a black friend. Yeah, she's vegan, you guys. But I'm not saying I also don't think Ariana Grande is a cannibal. Yeah, I don't think Ariana Grande is. Wait, what about the human remains? Were they were there human remains found at her place? I have no idea. Where did that start? I I think it might have just been on TikTok that like there she bought a house and there might have been like some skeletal remains on the walls, or I don't know. That were, like, from the 1980s? Probably. The 80s. I, I mean... That's crazy. So... But I love that he... That's the thing. Like, I... Because Ariana's not going to address this. Ariana's I, not going to say anything. So it's like... doesn't say anything. The whole point is don't address it to give it fire. Everyone knows Ariana Grande is not a cannibal. She has not been eating it up because she doesn't do that because she's vegan. Can I just <laughs> say something real quick? Yeah. I'm a little disappointed in the Boy Is Mine remix oh. with Brandy and Monica. Oh. Did you hear it? I heard... Here's the thing. It's a good song. Yeah, that's fine. Good song. It's fine. I just wanted some... You need to give it... I wanted more of just the reference. I feel like she's... Here's my problem with Ariana. I like Ariana. I do. Mm. But I want her to be, like, belting. Like, I want her to be, like, the Adele. You know, oh. she has that in her. Uh -huh. But she's so focused Keeps on this, like, like mm, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna pose and just whisper. What was that, Ariana? I don't know. She's always whispering and <laughs> it's, shit. I can't, it's a mumble. It's a, a There's a mumble, and I'm like, I need you to I'll be... Say, because I'll her and it. Cynthia Erivo together in Wicked is incredible. Yeah. And the, the level of talent in their voices is incredible. It's like, we want you to yell. We need more yelling singers. Let's please belt. Belt. Belt it out. I, I want to hear belt. more like, Wah! like yeah. that. Um, but I'm not... I'm not thinking that like Ariana is sitting at a table mm -hmm. with like a human leg eating it and then being like, thank you next. And they bring over another well, human leg. Well, maybe it leg. helps her voice. Maybe that. Maybe that's why she's mumbling is she has a full mouth. Can I just say what I'm, <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. You know what I'm kind of obsessed with? And I have not talked about this. I've been meaning oh. to talk about oh, this. Already. The real life voices. A what? Have you heard? The real life voices that are going on with the oh, girls. Yes, where they switch. Oh my god, because Paris Hilton is so. Paris did it too. Where she will pivot into her. It's, uh, it's, it's like, kind of like a dude. It's voice. like the rich girls version of code shifting or code switching. Yeah. Where like, where like they have to, they have this line, line and you. Hey guys. And like, yeah. And then I like to go to the store. Yes. Like it's just so. It's such a drag queen move. Yeah. You know, where like you do the whole like, I'm a woman. But I'm a man. But well, my like, name's Maurice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, totally. oh my God. Paris, I mean, Paris is iconic at it. But Ariana's. Did you see her? Yes. Do it? I saw her do it. Oh my and... God, you guys, I can't even believe it. It was so crazy. Uh, Yeah, you know, I just really went out. What? I don't know why she even needs a different voice. Because to me, you're you're that tiny. I want to, I want you to sound like Candy from Drag Race. Like I, Candy Muse. Like I want, like, Not like Candy Muse. Yes. Can like, you imagine Ariana? Like, like, when, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, like Candy Muse sounds like Wendy Koopa from yes. like, like Bowser's Children. Yes. Like that's actually Candy. I I want Ariana Grande to sound like Vanjie Mate. Like, like, <gasps> oh, yes. Mama, you can't even yes. handle this. Yeah. Like, can you imagine how great that would be? She'd be Absolutely. clacking. Oh, just a clackety clack clack. Oh, so incredible. I know. Well, um, 
Oh, here's something worth noting. Ariana found herself in a cannibalism controversy last month oh. when she said during a podcast interview with Penn Badgley mm -hmm. she'd want to have a sit-down with infamous cannibal Jeffrey Dahmer. I would, too. What? I would. Really? Okay. I've always said this. Now, Jeffrey Dahmer's a horrible human being. Uh -huh. and he did horrible things. Let me preface this, this. But if we're talking about in the grand scheme of serial popular serial killers, I think Jeffrey Dahmer is the hottest. I disagree. Do you? Who do yeah. you think is the hottest? Ted Don't Bundy. say Ted Bundy. That's so basic. That's so WeHo of you. That is so WeHo. You do not Ted shame Bundy. my no. serial Ted killer. Ted Bundy is WeHo. Jeffrey Dahmer is Silver is Lake. Silver yes. Lake. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and Jeffrey I, Dahmer went to Akbar. Yeah. And Ted Bundy went to Akbar for reasons that we shouldn't like. He for shady reasons. Where Jeffrey Dahmer went there to have fun. Oh, did he? <laughs> What, do you just want to go check out the jukebox? <laughs> that old he just wants to go to Bears in Space on yes, a Sunday, on the weekend? Yes. Go, <laughs> learn the words, bitch. He wants to go to Bears in Face. <laughs> That's what he wants to go to. No, but you wouldn't want to sit... If you had the opportunity to interview Jeffrey Dahmer, you wouldn't want that? No. No, why? I don't know. Okay. I because would, I know what he did. I mean, yes, I know what he did, but I also... I think it's... I think it would be fascinating to have a conversation about why he thinks he did what he did. Because he was insane. Well, yeah, but like, but people don't don't become insane. There's a reason for it. I think it was his whole like the dad situation and the mom situation. Yeah, you see that movie, My Friend Ooh. Dahmer, like Ooh. that, and Ooh. also incredible graphic novel too. Like that, Jeffrey Dahmer is an interesting one. I can't watch the Ryan Murphy one again. It was so, but Niecy Nash. Oh, Niecy Nash, any day, every award possible. Just Niecy, give it to her. Everything. Niecy Nash and Getting On. Have you ever seen Getting On, the HBO show? About her as a nurse. She was a nurse. Yes, 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 yes. So incredible. Wait, who else was in that? It Lori was... Metcalf and, um, oh God, from Family Guy. It was the Boys three of them. Yeah, it was like three, three nurses. So Alex Borstein. So yeah. fan. One, one or two seasons. It like, was like, yeah, very short. Something, it's based yeah. on a British show. The British show was also great. But like, oh my God. Yeah. Niecy Nash. If you watch one show, like that is a show to watch to be like, oh, that this is an actress. Yes, she's so good. Yes. I love she's Niecy. She's so Nash. good. Um, we have time for a couple more stories. Now, did you hear over the weekend that Ellen DeGeneres is yes. disappearing? Yes. Where do you stand on the Ellen? Do you hate are you a ha Ellen hater? Here's the thing. I feel like Ellen DeGeneres when the show aired was so much fun which their script or tv show, or the, the, show? i was never I, never I never really watched the tv show oh, I, I just remember when like like uh um uh laura dern was like mm -hmm. on it <laughs> yeah. i always remember when laura dern's you on. mean the episode the, the episode dern yeah i just yes. remember like the hype around that and yeah. oprah was on it and it was like I, yep i'm gay you know i remember that but i never really i don't think i watched the show i did i was obsessed with the opening credits because for years they made she made a bit about not having mm -hmm. a theme song and her trying to find a theme song mm -hmm. and so every episode it was a different weird bit that she mm -hmm. would do for the theme really good but the talk show i remember when the talk show came out i was like oh this is fun she's back yeah. like and and i thought it had a really really great run yeah and then I just thought it was just kind of got corny. Well, I mean, sure, but really the thing is, is like the show was always fine. It yeah. was the treat, the accusations of the treatment of staff and like, yeah. the way she treated people. And like, is Ellen out of touch with the normal human being? Yes, one thousand percent. Do I care that she's out of touch? No, no, not really. I mean, I'm glad that someone could get to that famous, especially a queer person, yeah. could become that famous. I'll, I was on one episode of The Ellen Show because they did some sort of retrospective uh, people who were impacted by the puppy episode, the coming out episode. And they invited us all on to like talk and do stories and meet Ellen and everything. And the nicest of news. Mm -hmm. Like literally the follow-up, everything was great. Like, Of course, I don't know what it's like to work on staff. That's one day. That's one doesn't really matter. But like, I kind of still like Ellen. I, I'm interested to see what, Ellen says because yeah. she was working out new material over here at Largo. Mm -hmm. Like she she's been working on something for a special, right? For a special. special. She took the stage over in Santa Rosa on July first as part of her Ellen's Last Stand dot 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 up yeah. tour, where she commented on reports about her behavior surrounding the end of her daytime talk show in May 2022. So she said that uh, I am many things, but I am not mean. She is saying she's denying the, you know, toxic work environment behind the scenes. Oh, um, and she's she... also saying she will disappear for good after this special comes out on Netflix. She's pulling a Richard Simmons. 
I hope not. I hope not either because I think, like, I hate that we want. I mean, yes, people if it's to a, if it's a disappear. Toxic, well, no, I hate that we want celebrities to be relatable. Yeah. We're in a sick and twisted time where we want to like have a beer with everyone. No, I want my celebrities to be crazy and out of touch and yeah. maybe kind of mean. Yeah. Like, do you think B. Arthur was fun to be around? Probably Absolutely not. not. No. Probably not. She actually in the morning she before had her coffee. She shoes off all the time. Ugh. Like, uh, no, she was annoying, I bet. But I still love her. Yeah. And they're not like perfect people. Like everybody no. has their day. And that's the thing, you, you know, when I, when I have a bad day or like, if I'm quiet for too long, people yeah. are like, what's wrong? what's wrong with you? What are you doing? And yeah. I'm like, I'm just, I'm living my I'm living. life. I'm I, like, living. I have shit to do. Like, yeah. not everything has to be. But if she content, was, content, I mean, content, content. if she did, like, it is horrible to have that, like, horrible boss. But I also feel like, too, if there's a celebrity of her stature in the room, like, I I've locked know. eyes with Ellen DeGeneres oh. before, and it was like peering into the White Walker Supreme from Game of Thrones. Really? Yes. Really? It's terrifying. Because, I mean, look how blue her eyes are. Yeah. But when you see Ellen just sitting by herself eating, like, carbonara, mm -hmm. like, you question things. One thing I do love about her, because she hugged me, and mm -hmm. what I was surprised, I, I study hugs, because when people hug, because, like, some people are awkward huggers. <gasps> she hugs, and then she pulls away and looks you right in the eye. And it was like... I didn't. I, I didn't know what to do. Oprah yeah. doesn't do that. Oprah, what, if you hug Oprah, like I did hug Oprah once too. What? Yeah. How was Oprah's hug? Not as good as Ellen's. <gasps> not as good as Ellen's. It was not one of your favorite was, things. I mean, I, 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 it was, I mean, <laughs> I feel it like, is. It is high up. It is one of my favorite things. Uh, I will say that. But it. But Ellen's hug was better than Oprah's hug. Oh my God! You heard it first, yeah. you guys. But I still love Oprah. I mean, she's. Oh. She should be the president. Any day. Any day. Please. Her and Gail. How great would that be? I mean, God, I would take anything. I Imagine would... the book club parties at the White House. Oh, absolutely. Like in the in the Everyone. Rose Garden. And the mayhem that Gail would do in social media as vice oh, president. Wow. Like that would be incredible. Um, so she says that uh during her last special, she is going to be talking about the accusations. Good. Um and she says that she's not mean. She says, I used to say I don't care what people say about me. Now I realize I said that during the height of my popularity. Um, I don't know. I'm excited. We'll see what happens. I'm excited. I I don't think she's ever actually going to go away. She's not going to go away. People who are that famous want that fame. Yeah. Do you know who's never going to go away either? Yeah. Faye Dunaway. <gasps> Did you watch? I saw like the first... I watched 20 minutes. every second of yeah. it. I was watching it with someone who's a little younger and they oh, were like on their bored. phone and I'm yeah. like, no, I get... Mm -mm, I'm I, obsessed with Faye Dunaway. I'll probably watch it tonight. I love it. I love Faye Dunaway. Do you have a... I had Drew Drogi on. Yeah, love and, Drew. Yes, of course. And yeah. he was like, every gay guy has a Faye Dunaway story in yeah. LA. Yeah. And his was, I want to say, I'm trying to remember what it was. I think he was in a movie theater. Oh, and I can't remember the movie, yeah. but Faye Dunaway walks in, sits down by herself, saw like 10 or 15 minutes of it, then got up and walked out. Incredible. Incredible. Isn't that just star-studded? I, mean, I would never, at this point with how expensive movies are, although I am an AMC Stubbs member, so... Me too. Shout out AMC anymore. Stubbs. Thank you, sponsor us. Um, but I would never leave a film, even if it's bad. Oh, I, have you ever... No, I don't think so. I've never walked out of a movie. Wait. Yeah. And I've no. seen a lot of Tyler Perry movies. <laughs> I have. I have. And I've never walked out of one. Not one. I've never seen a Tyler Perry movie. Really? No. Oh, my God. Tyler Perry movies are like... It's like going to a bad therapist, but realizing you need it and you maybe got a little something out of it, but not enough. See, that's why I wouldn't go in the first place. Yeah. It's I don't I don't mind them. If okay. Kathy Bates is in a Tyler Perry movie, I am there. If <sighs> Alfre Woodard is in a in Tyler Perry movie, I will be there. Viola Davis, the Regina King, these are people that I will go to Tyler Perry movies for. You I don't know think why? She, has. she hasn't been in a Tyler Perry. You know Perry why? Movie. What? Because he's gay baiting you. That's true. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. That's fine. I don't mind that. Bait me away, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like I'll be there if if Kathy Bates is in it. Put a bait worm me away. on that hook, Mama. Put a worm oh, on that hook, Kathy Bates. Uh, well, Faye Dunaway says in an upcoming documentary entitled Faye <laughs> uh, that her bipolar disorder was partially to blame for her notoriously bad behavior on movie sets. Throughout my career, people know she's from Florida. There were tough times. <laughs> I know, Dorothy Faye. Yeah. 
<laughs> the actress 83 says in the movie before stressing she doesn't want to dismiss her behavior. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to make an excuse about it. I'm responsible for my actions, but this is what I came to understand was the reason for them. It's something you need to be aware of. You need to try and do the right thing to take <laughs> care of it. That's my. F that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I mean, could you yeah. could stop clapping? <laughs> You're in my eyeline. <laughs> <laughs> hey, take it again. God, what are we doing here? <laughs> Damn it! I need to Tina. know. Is this the right angle? Is this yes. the right angle? Oh my mm -hmm. god! I can't drink out of a glass. I can't drink uh, out of a bottle. Oh, I can't when drink out of a bottle. She says, "I can drink out of a bottle. Give me a glass. Yeah. I'm really not that difficult." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this bitch. But I love her for it. I do too. I want her to slap people. I, I mean, I, I don't support physical violence, but I do from Faye Dunaway. I mean, Faye Dunaway can slap anyone. Faye Dunaway can call me a fat. Absolutely. Who's going to say it? Faye Dunaway calls me a fat. It's like a, it's like, I love you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's like, I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. It's her, it's her way of hugging. <laughs> Faye Dunaway hugs and Yes. 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 She like, embraces us. Oprah. Fully. Oprah's like cashmere. Yeah. Ellen is like. Mm, what is it? Well, what? Ellen's more like like a cactus. Yeah, she's more like let's play a game. Yeah, yeah. Like who wants to play celebrity? Up, <laughs> all the answers are me. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. God. That <laughs> boom, bing, boom, bing. How boom, many people bing. in lines at theme parks are just? Oh, oh God. God. Yeah. No. Yeah. And then Faye Dunaway is just like. Did you see the? You, you haven't seen the end of it yet. I'm sure. No. It doesn't give anything away, but there's a because the end. It's not. It, the documentary is bleh. But there's a there's a moment at the end where it's just slow motion shots of her taking off her glasses, uh, putting on her glasses, moving her hat forward, uh, moving her hat back. And it's just so cheesy. It's mm -hmm. like if Valerie Cherish reached the age of 80 years old and they made a documentary about her, that's that's what this documentary is. It is actually is us looking to the future of Valerie. somewhere? Well, I mean, I did just interview Lisa Kudrow, so maybe in my follow-up, I will suggest Oh that. my God, that would be amazing. Yes. The biopic oh of Valerie Cherish. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so well. good. Uh, Dunaway added that the condition, which is called a biological physical reality, is part of my makeup, and she is grateful Wait, for that medication. Is biological available. physical reality? Isn't that everything? Biological physical. Like our entire beings is a biological physical reality. Not to fade Dunaway. <laughs> she says the medication is crucial. The Body and Clyde stars clashes on sets are legendary. Chinatown director Roman Polanski called her a gigantic. Pain in the ass. Betty Davis. Betty Wouldn't Davis said, million dollars. Yeah. Like, worst actress in yeah. Hollywood. Like, yeah. the, the woman was hated. And they had one celebrity that worked with her, that worked with her, the little girl in Mommy Dearest in the documentary being like, I just, she's, felt, I just felt safe around her. She she's made, on it? Yeah, she's on it, yeah. <gasps> the little girl, not little like, girl. not the one no. who grows up to be Christina. Because she probably hated her. So yeah, Betty Davis famously called Dunaway the worst person she'd ever worked with yeah. during an interview with Johnny Carson in 1988. You yeah. can Google it, it's out there. Yeah. She says, describing her as totally impossible, uncooperative, and very unprofessional. Uh, in 2019, Faye Dunaway was fired from the Broadway-bound play T at Five for creating a hostile and dangerous environment backstage that left production members fearing for their safety. I long, I wish I could have came into this podcast interview and been so high maintenance and so ridiculous that well, your producer Lan would be like, "We have to get rid of, we have to get rid of her." Well, you'd be Mateo Lane. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Was he taking off his shirt? No, was not he yet. No, he just was like, "You're sitting over there. This is my side." I was like. <laughs> Like, bitch, <laughs> this is my show. I did, I did adjust the chairs and everything to make sure that my angle. That's was at fine. Least. No, no. Uh, I will say Mateo Lane is the okay. the Faye Dunaway of gay comedy. It's always got to be about Mateo. <laughs> With Justin, always about Mateo. Not mad at you, Mateo. I'm mad at the dirt. <laughs> uh, so a performance was reportedly canceled before curtain rose because Dunaway slapped and threw things at crew members. Which you should be honored to be slapped by <laughs> Faye Dunaway. That is an honor and a privilege. Yeah. Throw the mop bucket filled with Justin Bieber's piss in it. Yes. At my face. Yes. I would I would take that. Yeah, I think that's the last thing that was kind of well, Bieberish. Bieber doesn't trim his pubes. Sorry. Uh, she also allegedly began verbally abusing the crew who became scared for their well-being. She is also clashed by, by an 80-year-old woman. <laughs> Let her go. Let her unleash. She's also clashed with hairstylists in both LA and New York. Yeah. I'm sorry. 
I will always be team Faye. Yeah. Always. I don't care. Like, she can slap me. I want her to slap me. Yeah. That is my kink. That's my BDSM. Women of a certain age beating the shit out of me. Dunaway is my kink. Yeah. Hear that, Chapel Roan? Not karma. <laughs> yeah. Dunaway. I also don't like Chapel Roan. You don't? No, I don't get it. Oh, this I has been fun. It. Thank you guys so much for joining us. <laughs> How do you not like Chapel Road? I don't get it. It's fine, but I listen to it and I'm just sort of like, Neh. like, like the the like to me, Lady Gaga, her like looks and everything, like her drag met and met the music. It matched the music. Whereas I look at Chapel Road and I'm like, you're crazy. Don't match the music. Like it oh. just doesn't. It doesn't connect for me. There's Give some, it time. I don't know. She's bubbling. Also, she posted a picture of her wearing a pig nose. Yeah. And I did a look where I wore a pig nose, and I'm just saying I did it better. Wow. I did it better. I'll Can send we you the pull picture. that up or no? I'll send you the picture. I'll send you the Okay, send me yes. the picture. Well, she did it like Miss Piggy, right? Or she just wanted to wear a pig yeah. costume. And I did As the better Miss Piggy. Because one of us was actually a blonde. Snouts fired. Saying. Wow. Saying. Well, if you guys haven't seen the documentary, check out Faye on HBO Max. It's fantastic. Does she go off about Mommy Dearest? Because I know she was like, she doesn't I really. don't want to talk about so, Mommy Dearest. She doesn't talk about Sondheim. She doesn't talk about like any, uh, no, not Sondheim. Uh, Sunset Boulevard? Sunset Boulevard. What was it? Andrew Lloyd Webber, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Andrew Lloyd Webber. She doesn't talk about Mommy Dearest. There's a lot of big things that mm. they skipped. Also, the adultery and, like, a lot of other stuff. Like, all of that was skipped. But I get it, because it is, like, a complimentary doc about sure. her. Which I'm also okay with, because she's going to slap you if you t ask her about that. And we will be grateful. And I'll be like, give it to give me, Give it bitch. to me, yeah. Give it to me, bitch. Give it to you me, You love it when I oh. hit you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, mommy. Yes, mommy, what? <laughs> you know, I went as uh, Joan Crawford for Halloween one year. Oh. Oh, in school. You have perfect bone structure. Go on. For that. Thank you. Yes. Thank that was you. actually a compliment and a read. You have <laughs> you have bone you have perfect bone structure. Dot 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 for that. For Joan Crawford. For that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Tina, <laughs> bring, bring me the axe. Oh, H. Allen, thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. Please tell everybody where they can find you, what you have coming up, like all everything. your podcasts, everything. I'm H. Allen Scott on everything. H. Allen Scott. You can just Google and listen to You're Making a Worse and Out on the Nine and The Parting Shot and all the, in my drag, Sadie Pines. And and next time I'm here, we can trash on Katy Perry because that's one I, I also don't like her. Wait. That's another one I don't like. Let's discuss it real quick. Okay. Real quick. Okay. We have to. Yeah. Um, Woman's World. Well, frankly, she's, I mean, there's that line in Veep where um, Anna Klumsky says to Julia Louise Dreyfus, yeah. you being president has set women back for, <laughs> like, that's what I kept thinking watching that video. Um, it is so bad. The fact that they, they filtered out so much of her, but they kept her pores in. Why are, why can I see her pores? Why, like, it is so apparent. She's showing off her amazing, amazing body, but yeah. like, it's just, I don't understand it. I don't get it. It's it, it seriously blows my mind because everyone's like Katy Perry seven. She pulled this gimmick where she was like wearing a train with all the lyrics on it, and it would like went for days. And then we got it, and it is like I'm sorry, Mama, but it is the flop of the summer. She is the type of person who will do something, think it's amazing, realize everyone hates it, and then she'll say, "Oh, well, I meant for that. This is actually a statement." No, I'm being like I'm being like funny. Yeah, like, it's it's is, supposed to be ridiculous. This is ironic. No. Yeah, no. She, and ugh. it sounds to me, and I saw this online, that, and, and I was like, why does this sound so familiar to me? Yeah. And someone nailed it online, and they were like, this song is literally a transition song from Selling Sunset. Oh, interesting. It's and I was so like, true. that's it. Well, she, where they get out of the car in slow motion, yeah. and that song's Well, and it's under background. three minutes. My friend Kevin McDonald, he, the your friend yeah. Kevin, like the thirsty guy on, on Instagram, uh -huh. follow him. It's great. But he talks about on his podcast about how the like songs are under three minutes now, like this one, Woman's World. There's like, th there's no bridges or anything. There's it's no bridges. Literally, and it's made for drag queens, but it's like, the only thing she's given to the gay community are those nude pics of Orlando Bloom. That is the only thing she's ever done good for the yeah. community. Yeah, she's killed a nun. Yeah, no, um, no. Katie Perry, you are not an ally. No. 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 She's not. No. And I mean, this... None of it is good. It reads like a really bad Trump ad. It really does. Like, it... it I, well, I love Trisha Paytas in it, though. Yeah, Trisha Paytas, good for you. Yeah. Can I just say, 
if Trisha's listening, I would love to have her on. Oh my god, you could get Trisha. I would because one of my favorite things is when she's doing her traveler. Oh my god, yeah. Hello, traveler. Yeah. <laughs> you want to find this? Every the fact oh. that Katy Perry. Well, Katy Perry wasn't smart enough to get Trisha Paytas. Her like person, her the the one gay she has on staff. Well, she only has one. I bet. She, absolutely, because yeah. what she should have done is released um, whatever whatever songs were on her last album. I couldn't even. Tell I don't you really know what, what they last were. Album was. It was like Daisy or something, the name of her yeah. kid or whatever. And no Indian billionaire has given her money to sing at her but like, wedding. Look, whiskey for women. Like, what are you doing? It's so sad. It's so it's like a it's like those drag race sketches, like the really uh, bad ones. That's what that video is. It's a uh, bad drag race sketch. Except the drag race sketches are better. Are funny, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is just it's not good. It's a flop, and now yeah. she knows. Like it's been certified paper. Yeah. It's yeah, not good. It's bad. Okay, so, very... anyways, I but just thanks wanted thanks for the Orlando and Bloom nude. Yeah, thanks for the nude. Thanks for the thanks, nude. Katie. That was good nude. It was a great nude. It was a great nude. Yeah, multiple mm -hmm. front and back. Yeah, yeah. Poppers for days. 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 That, I'm still. I need to make that my phone screen. Good idea. My lock screen. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank I you. definitely please come back. I'd love yeah. to have you on again. My cat won't die next time. Oh yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get one with like nine lives. What's wrong with you? <laughs> My God, aren't they supposed to like live forever? <gasps> and as always, we will see you next time here on the Just Saying Podcast. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe and tell everybody. Thanks again. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.